welcome to this unusual cover party video, a little midweek quickie, that's what I'm going to call it, something that we all love, especially in the morning after a quick gulp of Listerine. Anyway, I'm here with Drew Styles of Instagram and Twitter fame. Drew, how's it going? It's good, you alright mate? Having a good one? Really good. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so we're going to be talking very quickly, this is our really, really quick little mini video. We're going to be talking about low loss headers. There's myths and bits and bobs about them. I had Drew down visiting the studio. We were doing another film for one of our bros out there. And uh, I said, look mate, before you go home, let's just get the stage set up. Let's have a little quick chat about low loss headers. Go over to the whiteboard and maybe dispel a few of their myths. So Drew, you've got one with you now. Yeah. Hit the beast. What are we what are we looking at? What are we talking about? This one basically it's um, it's got air separation in the top, got your dirt separation at the bottom with a built-in dry pocket magnet mm -hmm. which comes out like thus. Uh, drain off on it. But basically all low loss headers are just an increased chamber size with your flows, your returns, uh, with your laminate flow going through the middle which are used for if you've got flow rates required from the boiler which are bigger than the pump you can get. So in here you've got your waters mixed which then your pumps which you put on the outside to pull up the pressure through. So you can keep your water flow rates in your boiler, your return temperatures around 54 to 60 degrees which so keeps your boiler condensing, condensing yeah. all the time you get a more efficient system. And as we've all said to our customers, the more plume you've got, the more money is in your pocket, pretty much. So, I mean, low loss headers, obviously you've got your, your flow and return to your boiler, say, on this side. Or actually, let's, when we go over to the board, let's say the flow and return is in here, yeah. and you've got, okay, your feed out to, a, to say, a radiator circuit, and then a feed back again. How many can you have in an hour? Like, what's the maximum if you had a really big low loss header? Uh, what's what's the, the, the most you can have? I mean, well, is there really any limit? Well, commercial, you can have as much as you want, so long as you've got to size it for the system, it's got to work off your flows that you need for your system, your boiler size. So, so yeah, there's so there's a lot of things when calculating the size of a lot of setter that you put in this mainly three or four things you've all put together to work out the size you need. So I just got a customer bringing us up from yesterday. Let's just see if he's happy with the work we did. Welcome to the Oh mate! Obviously I bet he's not. leaving a voice man, Obviously isn't he? not. Big game of phone tag coming right up. <laughs> I'll leave that down there. If he rings back we can get that. So, say you're going to be fitting a Valent Ecotech combi boiler with a single heating zone and a single underfloor zone. Would you recommend putting one of these in or not? Is there a point at which, where, at it what stage? It on, on what your supply you need on the other side of the boiler is. Is your pump inside your boiler can't deliver the flow which you'd need yeah. on those two circuits, depending on how big they are, then you put a low loss header in yeah. because that's where you can get your flow rates out of the low loss header right. So, shall we go over to the whiteboard? We'll hold this up. We've got a little drawing that we can put up there. We'll have a basic system, then we'll just draw on like having added systems what, and what you do. Like, obviously, there's more to this than meets the eye because we're going to have to think about extra pumps, maybe control valves, and maybe non return valves. Yeah. So, let's pop over to the whiteboard right now. For those of you who are older, kind of our age, what was it in like Saturday morning before the TV came on? The girl with the oh, pen. with the clown and the thing. And the clown it looked a bit like this. Yeah, and that's what we're doing now. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's okay. This right. Well, let's. Oh, tell you what, you get that there. So, Carl and Drew, what have we got in front of us here then? Uh, basically, it's just a quick sketch. You've got your boiler, okay. um, flow. Pop us a little arrow. Pop us a little arrow on for the so flow. Flow. So we've yeah, and it. So we've got a little internal pump in the boiler in here, something yeah. like that. Um, okay, cool. And then what? This is where our low loss header would be. Then, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, cool. Um, good thing about the Mars. As long as you've got your water clean in that system. Yeah. The low loss header has a drain on the bottom, okay. so your dirt can collect there if it is in the system. Okay. And because you've got a drain, you can clean that out. And is that because there's like the water's moving at less of a speed, effectively? It's, isn't yeah, it? basically. It's a low velocity. So yeah, it low velocity charged. in the thingy. So. Yeah. This side. If you were to fit a low loss header, because your pumps in your boiler weren't big enough, you'd have to put your pumps on the other side. On the flows. But on this system, you, you wouldn't have two yeah. pumps, would no, you? No, no, this is just the options for you. To where's you where's your pump. rubber, mate? Where's your rubber? Yeah. So so if we've got our flow coming out here, so this water here is is being drawn out of here, up these pumps, yeah. off to say some radiators and uh, hot so, water So you have a central heating circuit, hot water circuit. Okay, lovely. Um, you'd have a two port or a non return valve, depending on how you wanted to do it. Okay. So that stops, so say this one cuts in, so this, and that one hasn't yeah. cut in, it stops it, it stops, stops it percolating. It's mixed 
flows right. through circuits that you don't want. So you can say if you, for example, on the bailing system, you'd have the pump kick in, yeah. and if you've got no return, it wouldn't pull it around yeah. the other circuit. Yeah, okay, cool. And that's, well, I suppose that's the basics of it there, that's isn't the, it? the most basic way of it. But the other one that a lot of people struggle with is, is your vessels, yeah. expansion vessels. Now your expansion vessel, you want to put on a neutral pressure point, so it's not going to be causing any issues with it. Because so, I mean, I've seen a few blokes put the expansion vessel on top when you've got a big welded one. Yeah. Okay, this is this is specifically for a certain type of install. Yeah. When you've got a big low loss header, you see them put on top of there. Which yeah. Obviously, it's a bit naughty. Yeah. I've seen a few of them like that. Well, they're, they're quite often you find people tee them into the bottom. Yeah. That. That's fine again because it's a neutral. Yeah, neutral pressure point. point. Yeah. All the this area here is kind of like that. Whereas here. You've got suction there, haven't you? Yeah. You know, you've got effectively you've got pull. pressure in here and pull a bit there, well, a yeah. little bit of suction there, I guess. So I've got a Grant Vortex right at my house. I've got an underfloor heating system. I've got radiators upstairs and I've got a hot water coil going to my vented cylinder. Would you say to me, get one of these? Or would yeah. you, you would do now? Yeah, really? efficiency, more condensing. you can have your boiler, more yeah. condensing. More I just said more care. condensing. I suppose the other thing we were saying about, what if you've got like this is for sort of light commercial or commercial installs. Say you've got, okay, we've got the same amount of circuits here, they're massive, but because they're so big, we want to give up the kilowatt rating. We haven't got much room to put a massive boiler in, so we're going to put two boilers in. Is that where these really come into their own? Yeah, again, it's, it's a good way because it's, that's where your water's mixed, so yeah. your flows are all balanced, worked out. You've got to size them right for the job. Yeah. So once you've worked out your kilowattage of your boilers, yeah. your temperatures, your flow rates, you size your lower setter, so you'd have another boiler. Yeah, draw it on. Also, do you have to think about how long your pipe runs are from the boiler to the header? So they're sort of an equal pool, do you know what I mean? Like when you, you know when you pipe together two, um, two header tanks in a loft, yeah. you know, and you want them to draw exactly same the right, same, same amount. amount. Time. Do you yeah. have to think about that the same way with these? Um, to a degree, yeah, your system design. Let's face it, you don't want that boiler to, like, right next to it and that one 10 metres down the other end of the plant. Yeah, you do. no, you want that them. To, see, yeah. They'd just be mad. So you'd want them pretty much in. Yeah, like that. You don't your pipes in straight, you want to do it like that. Where's, the, where's your rubber? No, I'm gonna teach, no, no, no. I'll teach you how I do my drawings. That's what I was about to correct it. <laughs> There's the Worcester Lola header. Yeah. Um, which, so you'd have two boilers, one boiler. Pushing it to the limit today. The Worcester one's pretty good for this because you can have two connections top yeah two connections oh you've done it love it at the bottom and then you can have three out okay so you've got three zones in there oh that is cool some people are going to ask as well i'm just trying to think of what you guys might ask in the comment section below or whatever would you ever wire it up so you have like a lead boiler uh because that i mean that was well back in the day we yeah, used to do that sort of thing yeah you know, switch it over every year yeah for example what i'd do is i'd have this one set that to like 70 degree flow yeah and this one at 65 okay and then that's just a rough number yeah and every year when you're there to service it Swap switch them over, over. Yeah. so you've got one working harder than the other yeah all the time yeah so that way you've got backup um guys if you get a sec pop over to instagram follow drew at styles plumbing styles plumbing uh, and also pop over to twitter as well follow him at styles plumbing very imaginative name. Consistent. Um, there's one major problem though, Drew, with what you're doing at the moment, and it's what you're wearing. So, at the click of my finger, you're gonna change. <gasps> hey, no, not that, mate, sorry. Oh, uh. This again. There we go. Results. That's what it's all about. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> right, anyway, thanks very much for watching today, guys. Hopefully this has given you a little bit more of an idea about low-loss headers. And especially, I suppose, they used to start off as just being basically a box, but now they have the addition of, you know... Air separation. Yeah, air separation. separation. Yeah, exactly. Filters, magnets. Filters, bits and bobs and everything in there. So it's um, something you definitely want to consider. And if you want to know anything more about it and you're at college, then ask your tutor, say, you know, we've done a video on it, Pummel Parts have done a video, just a very brief one, obviously, but still, you know, it helps you with the theory of it and all that. So, Drew, you've got a long way back, haven't you? 
Up to Wigan. What do they have at Wigan? What do they eat in Wigan that no one else ever eats? Peas wet. Peas wet. Look up peas wet, all right? Or I think they call it poo wet, didn't they? Peas wet. Peas wet. It's absolutely minging. That's why they only have it in Wigan, I think. I like it. It's gross. Do you like it? Yeah. God, no, I've never had it. It's minging. It's literally, what is it, pea water? It's the water off peas because they uh, back in the day when they couldn't afford to buy the peas. They could just have the water instead if you skin. And they, they pour it over bread, yeah? Yeah. And that's peas, mate. It's like, what is parsley sauce you have on your chips? <sighs> there, sir. Parsley sauce? Why? No, we don't have that. What's the white stuff with bits? Well, anyway, it? look, that's the end of the video, okay? <laughs> We're having enough of this. Please follow us on Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and the big one, Instagram. Uh, you'd have seen stories similar to this earlier on from today. Who, who's this? Do you recognise who this is? Sorry. I know who this is. It's Drew Styles! Hi guys! And he's in the studio! He's in the studio about to be interviewed! Oh my god! Oh, yeah. So there you go, click on the link or whatever, and obviously subscribe, that's the biggest thing you can do. If you think we've missed anything out, or we've got something wrong, then constructive criticism in the comments below is appreciated. If you want to be a knob about it, I'm just going to reply about your mum. You don't want that to happen, do you? Because I know all your mums. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video guys, and remember, what you got to do? Hold tight. Hold tight. Hold tight. Cool.